Hey everyone, Jared here, Magnetic Men's Club. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome, good to see you. I appreciate you guys tuning in, seeing what this channel is about. Today we're gonna explore a psychological theory that could change the way that you view relationships. Most of the relationships we're in today are very dysfunctional. And there's a lot of reasons why that is, but there's also a lot of things that you can do to change these relationships from dysfunctional from dysfunctional to at least functional or thriving and a lot of it has to do with self-awareness we're just not aware that what we're doing is causing dysfunction or what somebody else is doing to us we're perceiving it a different way which is causing friction which is causing dysfunction. And so today I wanna to talk to you guys about this theory, I'm okay, you're okay. Whether it's with your friends, your romantic relationships, or even the people you, at work, people you interact with at work, understanding this concept can open doors to healthier, more productive, more impactful relationships. So let's get at it. Originating from the field of transactional analysis, it was created back in like 67, I believe. Eric Byrne created this theory called transactional analysis. And the idea of I'm okay, you're okay, is one of the four life positions that we can take in our interactions with others. But what does this really mean? So I want you to imagine this in looking at this chart. I'm okay, you're okay, is a position characterized by mutual respect and validation. It basically implies that both you and the other person are valuable and worthy. And it stands as the healthiest position and leads to constructive communication and relationships. Now, if you look at the other positions, like I'm okay, you're not okay, I'm not okay, you're okay, and I'm not okay, you're not okay, all of these lead to dysfunctional and negative engagements. Interestingly enough, in this next chart, the same four positions map out perfectly with the four attachment styles that most, if not all people fall into relative to their childhood upbringing. Now I did a video earlier on the attachment styles. I'll link it to this so that you can understand what your attachment style is. And if you can understand what your attachment style is, you can then also understand what position you fit within this character characterization of this transactional analysis. So in this graph, you will see the four different attachment styles and I'm okay, you're okay, maps out perfectly with the secure attachment style. I'm not okay, but you're okay, maps out perfectly with the anxious attachment style. I'm okay, but you're not okay is a classic avoidant attachment style. And finally, I'm not okay and you're not okay maps out perfectly with the disorganized or really it's called the fearful avoidant attachment style, which is really a combination of the anxious and the avoidant and is the worst one to have. About 5% of the population kind of fall into this disorganized, so it's not a very prevalent one, but if you've ever met somebody that falls into either the I'm not okay and you're not okay, or the disorganized fearful attachment style, that person is very troubled. They are very hot and cold a lot. So you definitely have met somebody in your day. Maybe you're dating somebody, maybe it's you. So by observing which life position you're operating in can significantly impact how you resolve conflict, how you collaborate with others, and how you build connections with other people. Now, if you like content like this, if you're picking up what I'm putting down, please consider subscribing to this channel. Leave a comment. I'd love to hear your 
opinions and thoughts on this. Maybe you have a different thought or opinion based on these attachment styles that we're talking about, but leave a comment so that I know you're listening and that I know that this type of information is something that you guys are interested in. So how do you practice this I'm okay, you're okay in real life? <clears throat> well, it first starts, like I said, with self-awareness. By taking what I just said, maybe reviewing this video again, maybe Googling these four attachment styles, see which one you fall into. This is your baseline. This is where your self-awareness comes from. Now, the good news is about 55% of the population falls within that secure attachment style or the I'm okay, you're okay style. And that's a very good thing. It's really the only healthy one to be in. So if you fall into that, then that's a very good thing. You are generally a very healthy individual. You, un you have healthy relationships and you probably avoid unhealthy ones um, most of the time. If you fall into the other three, again, this is where self-awareness will actually help you recognize, oh my God, I, I'm an anxious attachment style or I'm not okay, you're okay style. Once you understand that, then you can do some research on what that actually means and then start changing your behavior to get into more of that secure attachment style or I'm okay, you're okay. And so it starts with self-awareness and it starts with being a little kind to yourself because I fall under avoidant. I am a classic avoidant and I am working on that. I'm in a relationship and I definitely do want to try to cultivate that relationship and make it as healthy as possible. And it wasn't until I became self-aware of my own avoidance, of my own attachment style, and it started making a lot of sense to me, like, oh my God, I, I do this. I'm always one foot in, one foot out of relationships. I'm always dismissive, generally, of my partners. So by me recognizing what the I'm okay, but you're not okay, which is also the avoidant attachment style, by me having that self-awareness and then having a little grace on myself because I didn't know, I was ignorant, you don't know what you don't know, then I was able to backtrack and look at all my past relationships and realize a lot of those relationships failed because of my doing. Now I can take this self-awareness and reverse engineer my own limiting thoughts and change them into healthier habits so that I can have better relationships. And since I've done that, my relationship with my girlfriend's gotten better, my kids, uh, my social circle, my business, um, my, my business dealings with my partners, creating that era or that sense of I'm okay, I'm impactful, and so are you having that equal exchange or going in with this idea with that equal exchange has definitely helped my own personal relationships. First, it starts with that self-awareness and having a little bit of grace on yourself because if you don't know, you can't get mad at yourself. Once you recognize this, then you can start recognizing your own self-worth, but also really recognize that self-worth of others. The classic avoidant doesn't really recognize the self-worth of others. We're always typically within ourselves that we are the only ones in relationships that are okay. And so that's a very sad in a way position to be in. But again, over the last three years or so, I didn't realize that I was in this type of attachment style. And so now that I can start doing the work, and it is a long process, guys, it doesn't just happen overnight, but recognizing that my girlfriend is fine as well. She is whole and complete. I am whole and complete. My kids are whole and complete. My friends and family, I'm okay, 
you're okay. This also helps open up communication where both parties can express themselves without fear of judgment. I remember in my when I was married, I was much younger, and I do remember my wife, even during our divorce, said at some at points in our relationship, I felt like I had to walk around eggshells with you because you flew off the handle, you were very judgmental, you had this superior attitude, you had these narcissistic tendencies. And when she told me that, this was years ago, she sadly passed away about eight years ago. But when she told me that, this actually started my journey into becoming a life coach, into becoming a performance coach, and into starting to re reintroduce me to me. Taking these limiting beliefs that I had within myself and start questioning them. And that's what I want you guys to do, is start questioning all of these beliefs that you have and ask yourself, are they true? Do they serve me now? And if they don't, what could be true? What could serve me better now? Adopting the I'm okay, you're okay stance isn't just about improving how you inter interact. It's about really transforming your view of the world and engaging more positive and supportive interactions. Remember, every step you take towards that mindset is a step towards better relationships. Thanks for watching. My name is Jared Schoemaker. This is the Magnetic Men's Club, and we will talk soon. Thanks.